how do you go about condensing Sunday and Monday into into Sunday? <laughs> exactly that. Trying to kind of have the the best schedule for the players and the coaches to kind of work independently, yet get everybody get everybody back together and do the normal closure. Uh, you know, maintenance and, and, and care that we need to do from, from a mental standpoint, a physical standpoint, and, and then flip the, flip the page a little bit faster and, and get ready for Cal. Normally, during the, the normal course of a game week tonight, we'd be having a game plan meeting pointed toward, toward uh, Cal, which we're, we're not going to do that. We're going to just, just tweak that a little bit and do that tomorrow morning. Uh, and the coaches have been hard at it from starting last night and, and into to uh, starting early this morning of, of, uh, of uh, getting ready for Cal. And so it's been a, a busy, busy however many hours since since uh, the game ended. And uh, guys are, are working hard, already pointed to Cal. We brought the players in and had a, had a, a condensed uh, kind of debrief of, of yesterday and, and get them uh, treated, hydrated, fed, and, and out of here. Mike, Scott on the back. Mark, back here. Um, uh, do you ever look at a guy like Farrow who he, he looks, take the penalties out of the equation, sort of what, especially what happened last night. Uh, do you ever look at him and think, and do you appreciate the kind of energy, that passion he has? Because it seemed like last night you're watching him, he spikes the ball and it's one of those, he's so excited. Is that sort of a refreshing uh, <laughs> thing to see? Uh, I think to a certain extent, absolutely. You know, and just like we talked about last night, there, there's nothing in football that ever happens individually. And, and, and he knows that. And like you said, his reaction was if that, you know, that's a very spontaneous action that I've seen a thousand times not called, you know, but again, that that's not what we should do. And he, he felt bad about it. We talked about it, got it corrected. And, and he, he went back in there and, and did some really good things. But, you know, he's a passionate guy. Uh, who has been a, a great player for us uh, so far this season, and we expect more out of both, uh, you know, with the ball, without the ball, and and eliminating those those potential, you know, ne quote unquote negatives. We got Ryan in the front over here. Mark, what are some a few of the things that have made Cal so much more competitive this year than last year when they were really down? Um, you know, the quarterback is playing lights out. And, and probably just another year in the system, although he was pretty good last year. Uh, we had the typhoon game, obviously, that, that affected uh, that, that situation. Uh, but I think they're, they're a lot healthier, you know, than they were last year. It's another, another year in, in their program together that um, I assume does nothing but, but help them. Uh, defensively, they're different. Uh, and, and, you know, that, that schematically, we can't, we can't, look back and, and see what they did against us, uh, us last year and have a lot of answers. So from that standpoint, that that's challenging, uh, but they're playing extremely hard. Got a bunch of, bunch of fast physical guys. Just a quick follow up on golf. Is he similar to Alden Morgan other than when it's in high school? Right. Totally uh, I think they're similar. Um, yeah, I think they're they're they can make plays with both their hands and their and their and their feet, um, and they're you know good anticipators. I obviously don't know Jared that well. I mean, I, I know him a little bit from limited contact with him. He's a great kid and a, and a heck of a competitor. Just down this side of the room for a minute, Warren. Coach, um, you had a chance to look at film from last night. W was that maybe your most complete game so far, more than midway through the season? And uh, do you think you're playing your best football now? Um, we're playing better, you know, and that, that's encouraging, uh, definitely not our best, or we certainly hope it's not our best. Um, you know, our return game, if, if we're talking negatives, uh, which you love, no, uh, the, the return game, uh, both kickoff return and punt return needs, needs to improve a lot. And, and that, you know, that's the thing, again, we talked about that last night. It's, it's one guy on one wrong side and it's a you know the difference between a two yard return and a 98 yard return and so th those things are frustrating uh we tackled better we didn't probably play up front offensively as as well as we did uh, the week before uh, against ucla we tackled better on the perimeter against some very good skill people it was a different different kind of set of uh uh you know, just a different style of offense that we faced last night uh, compared to last week or, or Cal or any, you know, probably anybody else we'll see in the future. Uh, 
and so that that was a good step. Uh, but there's a, a, a ton that we can improve upon for sure. Rob, if I could overgeneralize a bit, you guys were very good in the second half uh, in the first month of the season or so. It seems like you've gone from being a second half team to like a second quarter team the last couple of weeks. It's like you're <laughs> earlier, you're you're starting to break away a little bit. Anything anything to that? Dave gets nervous, so we try to try to get him better, better. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's just kind of the the rub of the green, I think, of of how that that happened the last couple of weeks. Uh, was it the first first play of the second quarter? I guess we scored on last night uh, to 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 get that going and had the the ninety nine yard drive, which was was great. Um, but you know, I don't know. I know I know our guys believe very much in their fitness. Um, the last couple of teams we've played play a ton of people on their, their starting defense and on, on the majority of their special teams. And, and that probably contributes to that. We were able to get in a little bit more rhythm uh, offensively, a few more plays and, and, and stopping them on, on defense limited their plays. So it was a good, good compliment that way. Andrew talk about overgeneralizing. I'm going to do that even more. <laughs> do you feel like no, the you last guys come up here and do these last three weeks or so, there's been kind of in flux with the injuries and the offensive line and the loss. Do you feel like you're back to where you were kind of the second week of the season when you guys were healthy, riding high? Do you like the confidence is back? I remember after Arizona, you said that the guys came in just pretty low, obviously. Did, did it feel like things are just kind of back to quote-unquote normal? Um, I, I don't know. I don't think they came in. I don't know if I said they were low. I think they came in, you know, disappointed, frustrated, and and – looked each other directly in the eye and said, Hey, let's fix this together. It, it wasn't, there was no, you know, pout, you know, element to it at all. Uh, but that's, we can't sit here and, and go, Hey, what if we had, you know, these receivers back or these offensive linemen back? We are who we are right now. And our guys are competing their tails off. And, and if, like I've said before, if you're in there, you're, you're our number one guy, you are our best guy and we expect you to, to play like it. And, and I think, uh, you know, the last couple of weeks we've, we've practiced with a little bit more of a, uh, grittier edge, uh, physically competitively. And that, that's shown up on, on Saturday. You change things in practice to kind of bring that out or is it a little an bit, effort standpoint? a little bit. I think it's just more of a, a mindset and an attitude more than, you know, different drills or anything like that. Hey, so over the past two games, you guys have been giving up 268 yards on the ground. Last night, you hold them to 133, excluding a 30-yard run from John Ross. That's barely over 100 yards. What do you attribute to that big change in your run, D? A bunch of factors. Uh, you know, the the style of offense is is different. Um, against against UCLA, we're trying to limit big plays in the passing game, and I don't want to say give them a few yards with the quarterback run, but you know, limit limit that and keep them in the pocket and and try to get them down. And then they got you know they got a ton of yards late in the in the fourth quarter. Uh, and then last last night we we tackled better in space, ran to the ball better. Uh, it was a different 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 set of 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 again, again plays to defend and types of, of of offense. And we got off the field. Uh, third down, you know, still is nowhere near what we need it to be, but it was a little bit better. Uh, and, and we'll, you know, continue to, to work on that. So talking about running Royce Freeman gets 29 carries last night. You guys kind of go away from this classic running back by committee that I'd seen from Oregon football for so long. Is that going to continue? Will Royce continue to see that many carries? Um, probably not by design too many times. We, we, uh, you know, that, that can catch up to you too late. Although Royce is, is, a, is a special guy. You know, Byron needs to touch the ball. Thomas needs to touch the ball. Uh, Kenny Bassett came in and, and gave us some quality carries as well as in, uh, did a great job in protection on a couple of big, big plays. Uh, we busted a protection up front and he made it right and had a huge play. Uh, and so we need the committee. We need it for us. That, that committee's good. Uh, and, but, you know, there's going to be things that happen in games that, that whether it's game plan dictated or readiness dictated, guys are going to have to, to carry the load differently game in and game out. Do you have any questions from those on the phone? I do. Uh, staying with Royce there for a minute, Mark, and, and I know you talked about him a lot yesterday, but I, I was just thinking about his game. One of his best runs I thought was near the end. It was like a two-yard run. He went inside, and there was nothing there. Broken outside, showed a lot of power. It was called back. But is that the kind of play that you have been expecting from him pretty much all along, that 
has really just come into fruition the last couple of weeks. I like the ones when he's untouched and just runs to the end zone. I, those are my favorites. But uh, no, he's a yeah, he's he's a he's a great running back. You know, he I think those three guys again, Byron, Royce, and and Thomas are very similar in that way. Of they they have that that gear, but they also have some power. They have some elusiveness, and and Royce is is starting to to just totally play naturally and that's you know when you get a tailback that just needs to see one thing and feel a couple others that's when they can start playing their best you know they kind of they kind of feel the front and how the you know the defensive tackle morphs to his gap and and they see one or two things on the second level and and they just they just play and and he's he's definitely headed that direction hey mark uh, based off off your experience you know last year and then of course, being a longtime coach, um, do you do you try to coach a little different now that November approaches and sort of the second half of the season to to get your team to play its best games? Um, you know, any yeah. any thoughts about that after after you know last three four games last year? Yeah, that's something that we're constantly on the the lookout for the the right answers between our kind of our uh, Jim Radcliffe or the rest of what we call our performance team, all the people that, that touch our players from a, a medical standpoint, James Hanish, who does a great job with our sports science. We try to predict the future in a little bit in that way of, you know, mm-hmm. what you do on Tuesday and Wednesday and how that affects your Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or whatever it is, or two weeks, three weeks from now. And we, we started kind of back last spring, winter as far as how we worked and then how we managed fall camp was slightly different and how, how how we're managing practice right now is a little bit different and you know essentially this time of year you have to to you know take a little bit off here and there but still be in you know intense and tough and hit and tackle uh but but stay healthy coming back here to uh, andrew greif Third downs yesterday, I think 11 of 18, and this year you're above 50%, um, top 10, I believe, in the country. Last year it was something about 44%. Is there any any big things you can pin that on of why it's just been a little more efficient this year? Not really. I wish I had, you know, we have a great quarterback and a bunch of guys that, that uh, are surrounded him making plays. Uh, we've been better on first and second down, and that that's, being, you know, being great, there's a – you know, a few stats in football that, that, you know, that have to do with like kind of your ratio of number of third downs compared to your, to everything else. And that, that's, that's where you, you're, you're really good when you're not, you're never in third down, you know, first and second down are so good, but uh, converting third downs, being, you know, having the confidence to play fast and free on third down, knowing we might go for it on fourth down, I think helps our guys a little bit, uh, but nothing, nothing special okay. except for Marcus. Speaking of Marcus, you said they have pretty good quarterback. In the spring, you said you kind of asked him to do three things differently, some footwork, improve there, holding on to the ball, and then just being a leader. Can you assess halfway through the season kind of how he is in those three areas? He's been uh, – his his leadership has been unbelievable. I mean, the guy is, the guy is a special guy in every phase, and, and that that element of, of his personality has developed so much. It's, it's, it's night and day. It's always – he's always been a, a powerful leader – but it's totally changed as far as how much volume has you know come out of his mouth, uh, and so that that's been really neat to see develop, uh, and I'm sure you guys have noted that as well. Uh, and then his footwork is is you know really really good uh, within our system, uh, and then the what was that oh yeah as far as is you know his ball carriage and all those things there's some things that that he can do better still you know we've had uh, three times where he you know the ball's been out. Uh, due to that, again, you know, is that his quote unquote fault? Not necessarily, but he can, you know, he can do it better and, and is, is committed to, to working on that still. So going back to Kenny Bassett, he saw season high six carries. I'm pretty sure he had five carries on the season going into the game. Should he now be considered part of the rotation? Because I thought he looked great out there. I, I, you know, Kenny's one of the guys that's been fantastic on special teams. I don't know if you, you know, if you notice on our kickoff coverage team that basically Charles Nelson now is either held or double teamed every time he, he runs down the field, leading the charge, and then Kenny Bassett has been leading a bunch these last couple of weeks. The guy, the guy is just a, he's a great team guy, unbelievable special teams player, uh, knows multiple positions offensively, and and has definitely, you know 
earned uh, what you said exactly some consideration for you know future relevance and so we'll, we'll see where that goes how about that consideration for future relevance <laughs> it's like my dating career <laughs> warren over here mark back to marcus um he's on another run uh like last year i think more than 300 pass attempts without an interception he's over 200 and i think 30 now without um an interception being a former quarterback do you just marvel at that at those numbers and what is it that he i guess maybe is he doing is he seeing receivers better or what is it about him that he finds these open receivers and well warren thanks for guaranteeing a pick in the next game this is like the the no hitter right you don't talk about this kind of stuff but um it's all those things you know all those things last night we got lucky you know, lucky they dropped one. Uh, we've had a couple times where the ball's been tipped, and you know that that happens. But his his accuracy, his timing, the 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 you know com, you know the time of the release to the ball placement to all just the awareness are things that mystify us all the time. He's so good at that, uh, and and those things you know sometimes and and that happened. You know, I always said when when Marcus was a red for redshirt freshman, his his ability to to play at his speed, be on time, be perfect, and and throw a pick, but then still play fast, that was really rare. And he's continued to 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 do that. You know, if 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 a receiver was on the wrong angle or two steps, you know, whatever it was, and he was in the right place, a lot of times young quarterbacks they blame that on themselves, and then eventually they play slower or make a you know make a, a a poor decision later based on what somebody else did, and that's a hard thing to to not do, and it's an impossible thing to teach virtually, uh, and so it's it's that that has always been an amazing thing, and and we sure we sure like that streak, something that I definitely ne never had. How how much have his receivers helped him? I mean, you get a ton. Pretty good production yeah. out of Carrington last night. A ton, yeah. Carrington, Dwayne, Farrow made you know made a couple great grabs. Uh, you know, Farrow's a six seven dude with a long wingspan and can really go up and get it. Darren and 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 Dwayne, they'll certainly tell you about it that they have unbelievable range, uh, and and so that that has helped a ton. And just while we're on that note, Dwayne and 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 Darren were kind of our. Honorable mention, players of the week offensively. Uh, Royce Freeman ended up being our offensive player of the week. Bronson Yim was our, our scout team player of the week, doing a great job with that that secondary. Uh, defensively, uh, Derek Malone was our player of the game. And Jalen Brown, uh, another young receiver who's having a fantastic uh, season for us behind the scenes, uh, was our, our scout player of the week for the for the defensive prep. Matt Wogan, his last 15 kicks now have been in the end zone, was our, our – uh, uh, scout team or scout team special teams player of the week and lane roseberry was our scout team special teams player of the week are there any more questions on those on the phone are you still on the phone well sure. hey, hey dave i'll ask questions can i ask a question yes <laughs> okay <laughs> speaking of matt wogan uh, uh mark uh, i think he pulled one uh of course he made one later but he pulled one earlier Looks like the Huskies were you know, basically trying to block every kick. Um, did he shy away from that because of the guy rushing him? And, and is that a concern, uh, just his focus on field goals? Well, again, that's an 11-person operation. We had we had some protection issues. We had a couple alignment issues. Uh, you know, PAT field goal is, is a. It's one of those things. It's 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 a simple mechanic that you just have to commit yourself to align correctly step correctly uh be big and have pad level and and we didn't do all those things part of that was was you know the part of that blame could be spread around to to a lot of places mm. okay well i i had one more quick question if i could uh mark at all surprise that midway through the season we're down to four unbeaten teams and two of them are going to play each other so at least, you know, that 14 plus may not have any unbeaten teams. Is this kind of a surprise to you? Uh, not really. I mean, it's, it's, it is tough. It, 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 you know, college football is that it's, it's so exciting as a fan or to, to, you know, for you guys to, to follow in the way you do has to be, you know, unbelievably endlessly entertaining. And then I was joking with one of our recruits and, and, uh, 
uh, his his family that was here this week and we're sitting there walking by and the kid had told me that he wanted to be a coach and so my first reaction is well I'll talk you out of that and then we walk out and we see the end of the Oklahoma game when the you know the guy misses the field goal and I'm like that's why right there you know and and that's something that you know is endlessly entertaining and provides a lot of a lot of stuff for a lot of people but it's it's uh the stuff that you stay up at night about was that all the question that was all the question coach uh doug brunner played some at guard mm -hmm. uh, this last week played a little bit against ucla too um obviously coming in as a center guys don't tend to flex there as much is that a product a product of, product of him earning that spot and being one of the best five guys or is it attrition on the offensive line some of both uh, well, I think the attrition, you know, has 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 led to a lot of guys having having a chance to to play. And Doug Doug has done a, a really good job. And so it's you know a combination of of both those things. He played really well when he came in against UCLA, and and we were trying to 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 work him in there this this week at, at guard. He's practiced there. I think that's again something that that Coach Wood does a great job of of training those guys all over the place uh, as, you know, as far as fall camp and, and throughout, throughout the season. And so he, he's a guy that, you know, we don't hesitate at all to, to, to put him in there.